Hi everyone, I'm here with one of my clients, Carolina Putnam, who is gonna be sharing with us some of the lessons she's learned in our work together. Uh, hopefully this will inspire you and show you what's possible. And uh, let me begin with Carolina's intro. First of all, hi Carolina. Hola. <laughs> so Carolina is a Louisiana native and she's the founder, of direct, founder and director of an organization called Revivolution which is an intercultural organization that's dedicated to sharing indigenous traditions in the heart of mo uh, modern culture. She now lives full time in the Sacred Valley of Peru, which is near uh, where Machu Picchu is. And she works closely with her family of the Caro Nation, the indigenous nation, to support individuals and communities in sustainable and purposeful living. So her organization, Revivolution, and her Caro family, they offer indigenous ceremonies for individuals and groups. So any of you watching this can actually travel to uh, where they are and have a, an authentic uh, indigenous experience with the uh, spiritual ceremonies and, and, and the teachings and the transformational retreats there. They also, they also provide service team work exchanges to build what they're building right now is an eco sanctuary. Um, and they also provide intensives to teach individuals how to apply indigenous, indigenous wisdom to modern living. <laughs> so welcome, Carolina. Great having you here. And uh, we can actually hear the, um, the, the birds uh, in the background, which is really cool. That's, that's authentic, <laughs> authentic being out there in, 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 in nature, living out there. So... Um, let's talk about some of the lessons you've learned. Uh, some of them have been surprising to you. Some of them have been delightful uh, that you've learned in our work together. So one of the things you mentioned to me as we were, we were talking about this is about what you've learned in terms of content. So maybe you can share a bit about that. Can you hear me well? I know my internet seems to be freezing a little. Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. Okay, so you asked me what are some of the most valuable lessons that yes. I've been learning with you. Okay. Yeah. Well, I definitely know one of the ones that was most surprising to me was actually you showed me how to check in on the back end of Facebook at, our, um, at, the, at the business um, side and looking at the ads and looking at the posts. And um, I was really surprised to find out that most 70 or 80% of the people that are um, following Revolution are women. I did had no idea. Um, I did have an idea about the age bracket, but not as pinpointed as you helped me to see. I, um, I thought our age bracket was quite a bit more broad, but it seems that our age bracket actually is between um, the age of 25 to 35, and sometimes into the 45. And um, they are women that are in between 25 and 35 that love um, festivals that like plants and alternative healing and uh, so yeah it was just kind of cool to be able to check in from the back end and get more pinpointed to who some of our fellow allies are and um, I actually thought you were reading my my profile of things that I had done this year because <laughs> it was all artists that I had seen this year through our work and um, you know um, herbal companies that I love so I, I guess I'm like my own target audience here <laughs> which is great yeah and um, yeah, that was really nice for me to understand um, because it helps me to, to consider a bit more whenever I am thinking about the educational content. Mm -hmm. And um, that was another biggie for me that I learned from you. And actually that was the reason I um, decided to become a client of yours. I read the first page of your book. I didn't even get through like even two pages into the chapter. And I was like, I'm gonna call him and see if he has an extra <laughs> An extra space right now yeah. uh, because I felt that it was so valuable what you were sharing particularly around the approach of sharing educational content <coughs> Excuse me. and um, so sharing educational content has been really impactful because it actually allows me to go deeper into the teachings that I'm learning here mm -hmm. and to form them and how to articulate them and then to share that with others and so it naturally invites the right people to come and be with us. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's no, okay. Yeah. Um, and you can also <coughs> notice that, that of the different types of postings you've done, it seems like the videos are working well for you guys. 
significantly more. I mean, um, sometimes if I do a writing, maybe 50 people like it. Now, if I do a video, about 1,500, I mean, yeah, 1,500 people to 2,000 we'll, 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 we'll see it. Yeah, we'll watch we'll it. Yeah. We'll see it. And maybe yeah, yeah. like somewhere around 50 people or I guess including my messages. There's like a back and forth of messaging around like 50 messages on each video. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. And, and, and I think just for everybody watching this, like it, it isn't always the case that video will work for every business. It really is important for every business to test out the different forms of media, video, images, text only articles, um, and maybe shares to various links or whatever it may be, but different forms on social media so that you can let your audience tell you what they see as the best fit for your brand, your style. And in, in this case, um, Carolina, your, your videos where you share your understanding of, of the wisdom makes uh, a lot of sense because that's sort of the mission of Revivolution is to bring indigenous wisdom into modern culture. So you are essentially acting as the bridge between those two worlds. And therefore, when you share it, it's an, an authentic, you know, with your own, self multimedia then people say oh yes i can relate to her from you know based on the fact that she grew up in a modern culture and i am intrigued by the wisdom she's learning now being part of the indigenous culture so it's really cool i am glad you're, you're doing that one of yeah, the other i really yeah. like that point please sorry to interrupt oh please please go ahead i really like that point and that's one of the points that has stuck with me a lot is let your audience tell you what they love and appreciate and let them show you what they what they're wanting and um, that's one of the biggest takeaways I think that I've received um, from listening to you and have it repeated over and over too and watching you use that model like and knowing that it works because I signed on for it you know and I don't feel that I'm being like worked in any way I'm like willingly signing on for it and I would love for people that want to work with us to feel that same way they they genuinely feel that they're being benefited through the work that we're sharing and, and through what we're interacting with, you know, they're mm -hmm. sharing exactly what they want to see more of. And so oftentimes I'll make videos based on questions that people actually ask us in a class or in a ceremony and the ones that repeat over and over, I'll have to make a video about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and you've also been learning a bit about the importance of partnerships. Do you want to say a bit about that? Yeah, I've really, this is something I've been exploring. I can't say that I've landed them 100%, but I, I love that idea. Um, I actually just made a video today about um, collaboration or reciprocity. And that's just, this is one of the things that you're actually sharing. It's, it's both a spiritual concept as well as, as well as a business concept, as well as a friendship thing. And um, so, for instance, right now we're about to build an eco-sanctuary. And I definitely felt how much of a city person I am today when my husband is showing me how to rake, the, rake up the dirt to plant the corn and I'm doing it all wrong the whole time. And um, but the, that process for me to understand what do we do to build an eco sanctuary, you know, we're hosting a retreat. Um, in April to do a permaculture design certificate course and I know nothing about gardening i know not, not i mean i know a little you know i know how to be the bridge and to do the coca and to do the ceremonies and i bring those messages out in a spiritual context but in terms of the land i'm not sh quite sure so one of the partnerships i've been exploring recently is with my friend tom leblanc who um, was one of the first people that came down to peru to support us and he is a permaculture design um like landscaper and he's also wanting to expand his business. So we've been speaking and we're gonna do a mock workshop um, next week. And the partnership would be that he, he does know permaculture and knows those um, steps. And I'm the ideal client of someone for him, you know? And I'm also can, can bring in the spiritual aspect of how permaculture is um, united with indigenous wisdom. 
And so we'll be doing a workshop to share how Andean wisdom and um, earth wisdom can actually benefit even a modern lifestyle in, in the city. And so we're testing it out with my, um, my service team that's already here next week. And then we hope to have it really dialed in for, um, to invite everyone to come starting in January. So once a month, we'll be offering a permaculture design and Andean wisdom workshop online. And very, that's very a cool. good partnership where we're both growing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd love to just take a moment and have you, oh, by the way, I'm hearing some noise from the microphone. I don't know if um, there's something wrestling around or not. That's okay. My, it fell out of my ear a little bit ago. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, that rustling there. But anyway, um, uh, I'd love for you to show us. I mean, you you live right there, you know, like in in just amazing, beautiful nature. Um, do you want to show us, like, just on on the screen, like out your window? Okay. <laughs> You're showing me this earlier. So, this is out directly out my desk window. It's corn and the mountains there. Wow. And then right outside my little balcony door is this mountain. Oh my gosh. It's the real deal. <laughs> it's very incredible. Um, one of the other things you've been learning is about, of course, joyful productivity, which, which, uh, which we talk about. And um, let's see here. I can hear you now. Okay, yes, great. Yeah, and so tell, tell, tell us what you're learning in terms of joyful productivity. And uh, I know it's always a work in progress, but what, what, are you, what are you getting from it? Well, I'm still trying to bring the joy into it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Um, but yeah, one of the things that I've really appreciated it through your joyful productivity workshop is um, creating a schedule. So I live in Peru. And I can't even tell you how challenging it is to work with indigenous people and to also be on Skype calls and be with Australia and with Europe and United States and have plans and newsletters and at the same time being doing both. And I was really confused for many years. Like, how do I, I felt really confused. How do I stay up with all of these tasks? And I felt that I couldn't even, you know, eat dinner peacefully with people because I've just like, should I be doing something else right yeah. now? Just really thinking that I was falling behind. And so one thing I learned with you is to make the um, categories. So in having categories now, I know um, whether I follow it to a T or not, having a schedule in place for the week really supports me. So whenever there are people that call that are potential clients or participants, then I know to accept them on Tuesday or Thursday between four and 6 p.m. Yeah. And whenever we are talking about a, a partnership or a JV, then I know that I do that on Wednesday. And so it's not so confusing. And, and I know that if I wanna do newsletters, I do that on like every other Friday or, right. um, so just having that in place helps me to, feel confident that I'm not slipping yes and even if it happens like today today I did not do some of the things that were on the schedule exactly because it was necessary to go to corn and to do the land but I did a video at the same time Great. and so if I have a whole day where I need to go to Cusco and do lawyers and do you know notaries and all of these things which take an entire day sometimes too here I know that in the back of my mind that I'm not missing and I know the next time that I'll be able to get to it. And the categories like you shared, rather than filling up my calendar with tasks, I have categories in lists on, on my phone. Yeah. And um, can you still hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So I have categories and lists on my phone. So I know that when it's JV time, I go to the JV category and I know where my next one, who, who's my next JV to, to speak with and to approach. Yeah. And um, that's been really helpful for me. And, and being that it's all virtual too, if I do have an entire day where I'm doing the land or, you know, working with my students here, then I can just move the slot over and they can mix, mix and match and move them around. And for me, that's been really helpful. I feel a lot less um, stressed you know, and feeling a lot more easeful of how to adapt that to the type of lifestyle that I have here. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
So maybe we'll, we'll, complete, we'll just kind of start wrapping up the call and uh, two things. One is I'll definitely want you to mention your offerings um, as we close the call. But one other thing that um, in our work together, uh, I mean, in part due to our work together, you're, you're starting to see your courses um, fill more. And do you want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, it, it was really interesting what happened when the more I put out content, people started asking us to fill our courses. So I noticed that the people that are most attracted to us would rather me not set a date for our retreats. They would rather us have this ongoing package and they let us know when they're available and one person will sign up. And then I put that date out there and more people sign up. So that was really surprising to me. I'm still trying to wrap my head. My mind still wants to structure everything. Uh -huh. yeah, and yeah. I'm still just, um, it's been really nice. Every time we end one course, other people are recommended. And it, it's happening now three months in a row. Wow. Yeah. It's Fantastic. been really nice. Yeah. Um, awesome. So tell us what, what the courses are coming up and any, anything else you, wanna, you want the audience to know about. Yeah, gracias. So, um, yeah, the ongoing course that we do that a lot of people have been signing up for, um, it's called Applying Andean Wisdom Intensive. And this is where we share um, five days of how do we integrate indigenous practices into daily life? And how do we use some of the tools that are around us all the time, whether I'm at the computer, whether I'm in, on the road, whether I live in the city, whether I live on a farm. How do we do some very simple practices? And many of them actually, many people are actually introduced to already, such as smudging. Um, people maybe know a bit about tobacco. Um, some of the plants that we work with, I realized are some of the more controversial plants in the world. <laughs> we work with coca leaves, we work with tobacco, and we work with alcohol, all as offerings. And so what we do in this course is share how making offerings and formulating our own prayer and connection to the earth can really support our work and our passions. And from there, we kind of build up. So that's the base course, that's the intensive. And from there, we do a 14-day retreat, which is this the base course, with an additional trip out to the jungle and to meet the master weavers and learn more about how to do the dyes and the plants. And crafts in indigenous um, traditions is a way of meditating, keeping the mind present, um, and creating gifts that reflect nature. And um, then we do an herbology course in that. So it's all about plants. And our third um, immersion or course is the same that we just shared for two weeks and with an additional permaculture design certificate course with um, Penny Livingston Jr. of Bolinas. And so this is where we learn where these offerings and these practices came from originally. It came from our connection to the gardens and to support us to, to be in connection with the earth. And so all of this is to support everybody to, you know, find um, whether we're moving more into the plants and to nature or whether we're living in the city, how do we cultivate practices that can really enhance our lives um, today in time. And so all of those courses are posted online on revivolution.net. And yeah, wow, nice. I love it. I will be sure to put the link and as well as your Facebook page, both of that into the notes of the video. I really encourage everyone to go check it out. I mean, it really is um, an extraordinary type of um, organization and experience that you guys can have if you decide to work with them. And um, maybe just to end the call, can you tell us a little bit about coca leaves? I mean, because I know that's such a big part of the tradition. I think it was the rustling you were hearing before. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Open them here. And um, yeah, so the coca leaves are um, a spiritual practice um, around the Andes. And um, it's seen as the mother of wisdom and a connection to the earth. And so I'm going to grab three of them here, which is called a quintu. So I put three together. And if we were sitting here in the same room, then I blow my good intentions and I pass them to you. And I say, hey, pai kusunchis which means we, we share the same life force. And so this is a way of establishing community. We, we share and we sit and after about 20 minutes, our, our conversation elevates into a certain space and um, we have a really, really beautiful conversation. So this is a tool for communication, um, both personally with the earth and um, 
amongst people together. So in, if you come to a service team opportunity here or to a course, then we you cook all day. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, this is great. And the, you actually have a video where you go more in depth into that. So mm -hmm. people can find that on your Facebook page. Well, thank you, Carolina. I really appreciate your time and um, your uh, just diligent application of some of the things that we've been working on. And I just look forward to seeing Rev Revivolution grow and thrive in 2018. Gracias. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank and you. I really appreciate our, our, our time. I look forward to it every, every two weeks. <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, everyone checking this out, go and take a look at the links in, in the notes of the video and perhaps you'll have a chance to go and enjoy the actual experience with um, Carolina and the Caro Nation out there. All right, bye everyone. <laughs>